Oh, they're great, actually. Oh, man. The rest of the guys will not get the whole picture. No, not really. I mean, it's hard enough being gay. It's even harder being open about it, but it's horrible when your own friends, your, your roommates, can't even take a freaking hint. I mean, I don't have a problem with being out, you know that, but I just have a problem with saying, hey, I'm gay, in front of all my friends. You know, I can still tell them. Yeah, but, well, look, just let me give it one last chance. I mean, I pretty much spelled it out for them already. Hey, how's it going, so boy, huh? All right, Mark. Man, you should have seen Mr. Van last night. We were at the bars, and he had all the women swooning. But he didn't talk to any of them. He sat back, played his cool, and watched him kill. Yes, I, I had a really good time talking to my feminine friend, Chip. Uh, you know, out of all the women at that bar, I really didn't find any of them attractive at all. Well, you know, you have to have the test and I've never kept you south of the lake of the women drool. Oh, man. Randall! Wild, man! Right. <laughs> you guys remember like, two weeks ago when we were at the CI and those two model twins, Cindy and Bambi, wanted to take me home and have a threesome with me? <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, you might remember from that night that I ended up going home by myself, watching my tape of The Sound of Music and seeing the Lonely Goat Also that night, I was wearing a dress. <laughs> no, man. You're so crazy. Come on, man. All right. Uh, well, hey, check out my new CD. Uh, Judy Garland sings Tom Jones. Uh, Garland, Garland, Garland. Liza Minnelli sings the best of Barbara Streisand. And, uh... Judy Garland sings the only goat her. Jimmy's a jokester. He's a 
guy has a sense of humor about himself doesn't mean he's gay. No, no, no. The fact that he has a sense of humor about himself doesn't make him gay. The fact that he has anal sex with men, that makes him gay. He's gay. Gay, 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 gay! You mean like, how be gay? No, not like how be gay! Like Jim J. Bullock, Richard Simmons gay! Make it homosexual! Oh my god. <laughs>
And I think, I think what I need to do is uh, actually get a little open dialogue going with women to help out all men everywhere. I mean, that's what I do up here. That's, I'm here with a socially minded purpose. I don't just come up here and tell jokes. I don't know what you guys know. A lot of people think we just tell jokes. I think all of us comics have kind of a social purpose in mind. And mine is to get an open dialogue going between men and women with the purpose that ultimately men will know what the fuck you women mean when you say whatever the hell it is that you say. Because we don't, but the... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little first. I'm, I'll release a little bit about men first. It's only fair. No, don't worry, guys. I'm not going to tell them what happened in the pool or anything like that. But I think it's fair to release a little bit first. So I'm going to tell... Women, what better way to describe the inner workings of men than by describing the inner workings of the men's room? The restroom. Now, ladies, I don't know what goes on in your restroom, but in our restroom, there's an extensive list of rules. Rule number one, there will be no physical contact in the restroom. Now, this includes you cannot bump anyone, anyone, you cannot shake anyone's hand, you cannot uh, so much as like, brush against someone, you can't hand someone a paper towel. I don't know why guys on a football field can grab each other's ass every time they want. Guys in a restroom cannot so much help a guy who slipped on a wet spot and is bleeding and dying of a head wound. <laughs> Rule number two, there will be no casual conversation at the urinal. This is a place of business. Guys will do this. They come into the restroom and they're talking. Yeah, so I was at the bar, right, and I saw this girl looking at me, so I went up, I figured I'd lay a line on her, right? So then I... <laughs> She didn't go with me. I figured the bitch must be a lesbian. <laughs> rule number three, there will be no peeking. Now, ladies, this sounds like a simple enough rule, but this also includes anything that could be in any way misconstrued as a peek. You cannot scratch your nose, you cannot sneeze, you cannot have a, some sort of twitch. Now, to avoid this, most guys will opt to stare at the wall three inches in front of their face and pretend that it's all perfectly normal. <laughs> Now, some guys will go for another option, which is to look down and watch the action. <laughs> That's legal, but it's a little risky, because there's not so much a difference between this and this. <laughs> now, if something happens, if, if, if you scratch your nose, if you have some sort of twitch, God forbid you actually peek, you have basically one option, <laughs> aside from killing the guy. If you peek, you've got to sort of act like you've got some sort of nervous condition and play it off. So it's kind of like, you know, you're pissed there it is, you know you peek. <laughs> You're fucked, so now you gotta go like this. <laughs> <laughs> you Help me up. I wasn't looking at your dick. <laughs> and of course, if he does help you up, he's touched you and is, of course, homosexual. <laughs> rule number four the proximity rules. Now, ladies, I would love to explain these in detail, but it would probably take a whole quarter's class, and uh, a certain level of testosterone is required to understand these. Anyway, but guys, you'll back me up on this. I'm going to give you guys the cliff notes for the don't stand too close to another man when his dick is out rule. <laughs> and to explain this, we're going to assume a five urinal restroom. Here, here will be the door. Now, the guy walks in. The first guy will go to the farthest urinal. Guys, another guy comes in the restroom. Where is he going? Middle the first urinal. Middle you? Where's the hook gay guy in the audience? <laughs> now, now, the third guy who comes in will go to the middle urinal. Now, urinals two and four are completely off limit because there's a man with his dick out here, a man with his dick out here, and a man with his dick out there. <laughs> On some instances, the guy can come and go for the fourth urinal, in which case the other guy has to go for the first urinal. Now, however, if anyone else comes in, he can't use any of them, and the logical part of his brain kicks in and goes, wait a minute, there's three open urinals, we've got to piss. But there's two guys with their dicks out. <laughs> we gotta think of something else to do. So he'll go and he'll pretend he has to wash his hands before he pisses. <laughs> Maybe he'll go and fix his hair, which is also risky, because remember, we're trying to prove we're not a homosexual. <laughs> if a guy does come in, and I've only seen this happen once in real life, and goes directly for the third urinal, he has proven himself to be a homosexual and completely precludes anyone from using the restroom for the entire duration of his time in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe this is just me. <laughs> Every time I do one of these things on stage, people say, Mike, you should see a doctor. <laughs> I think I should. Actually, I would see a doctor. I'm kind of scared of doctors, though. I don't know if anyone else has this fear. I, I have a real problem with doctors because they're not doing medicine. They're practicing it. <laughs> When I practice something, I don't expect to get it right every time. You know, some friend will like go see a doctor. He'll be like checking me out and like sever my spinal cord. You'll sorry. 
just practicing. I'll get it next time. You know, lawyers too, you know, they're not doing well, they're practicing well. So I go to see the doctor, lawyer fucks up. <laughs> Sorry, I'll get it next time, I'm practicing. I never got paid 120 bucks an hour to practice goddamn thing. <laughs> but uh, actually, you know who I do like is the dentist. Because he ain't practicing. He's out there professionally trying to inflict as much pain as possible. <laughs> Which is why I, kind of, I feel bad lying to the dentist, actually, because I have so much respect for him. But, you know, people always think I'm joking when I say that. But, you know, every one of you goes in here, tw twice a year you go into your dentist and you lie to the man. No matter, I mean, like, I don't know if you can make up for six months of oral neglect in one morning, but you're damn well going to try, aren't you? You know, there no breakfast, you're in there brushing like the wind, flossing whole teeth out of your mouth, and go in there and you lie to the dentist. He knows, he went to school, he's like, you know, you look a little plaque there. I, I've been brushing. Well, do you brush? Oh, yeah, I just, just, oh, just, brush, brush. He knows, though, he's like, mm-hmm, we're going to have to drill. Now, you know, your tooth is this big. How much drilling does it take to fix that tooth? You know some of that drilling's punishment for lying to him, isn't it? You know he's just sitting there going, well, son of a bitch, when it's in here, right? Motherfucker, you think I didn't go to school for eight years for this? I'm gonna get the bastard talking. So how's school? Yeah. You bleed, motherfucker. And the dentist is a son of a bitch. That's why I'm a big fan of the eye doctor, actually. Now there's a nice guy. He's got the cool office and he's got all the neat toys in his office. He's got that eye chart you try to memorize before he comes in. <laughs> you, know, and it, you know what I really like? The, the thing that, on the arm, you know, that comes out and goes in front of your eyes, because it's kind of like the Star Wars thing. You know, do you guys play Star Wars? You, you know how it is. You get in there and you're waiting for him. You got time. So after a while, the thing gets you kind of pull it out in front and you get to play like, you know, Luke Skywalker, you know, and you know, stay on target. You know, I can't see him. I can't just stay on target. You know, you pick the pen light off the thing that he's flashing your eyes, then your lightsaber, and you're boom, 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 whipping it around. You know, and you get up on the chair, and you got to go free the frozen Han Solo, right? Because you know he's there. You get to take all your clothes out and put those eye drops on you to be like the job of the hut character, right? You get there, and you got this pen light, and you're all naked, and you're covered in eye drops. And like, great this is when the eye doctor walks in. Man, we've all been there. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> right? Uh, no. Change the subject? <laughs> okay. Got to get the crowd back on my side. Actually, well, actually, I do have some good news. I, uh, I just got engaged, actually. Woo! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> actually, no, okay, that's what I was looking for. That's a dirty lie. You know I have trouble with women. I didn't get engaged. That's something us comics do, though. We get up here and we beg for applause. Like the dogs we are. Get up here, yeah, I just got engaged. I just got married. You, really, anything to do with marriage, really, people people will clap for it. You know, I think you're paying for a comedy show, but they come up here, just got married. Oh, great. Fucker got married. It can be anything. You can be like, yeah, I celebrated my 13th anniversary seven months ago. Oh, woo! <laughs> you know, that's not the only thing. Just got married, just graduated, just had a kid. Everyone's favorite, of course. Name of the city. Yeah, you guys know this one. You know, the guy comes out. And I'm from here, but it's different for other people. You know the drill, though. He comes out and he goes, Athens, Ohio! Woo! There we go. You know, even, even better, we'll go, so, Ohio University! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking since this morning. But just <laughs> no, sometimes they just come out and ask how you're doing. And they come out, well, if, if they're really just starting them, they come out, so how's everybody going? And then they just go on with their jokes. But you know, if they really wanna really wanna get people to scream, they get down on that like cool guy position and get that fist going. That's everybody going nice! <laughs> there, you're learning. <laughs> Bunch of bad love dogs out here. You know, you know what I think? I think it's because people don't really know how to talk to comics. You know, because if you go to the doctor's office, he says, so how are you doing? You go, oh, I'm doing fine. I, my hip hurts a little bit actually, and that's why I'm here. But you know, like you're out in the crowd and there's a lot of people and you really can't see you through these lights, you know? So I think the thought process kind of goes, you know, it's like, how are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm doing fine. There's so many people here, there's no way he's gonna hear me. I'm just a face in the crowd, I'm a nobody, I'm lonely, no one ever loved me. No! Okay, just me. <laughs> I, and, you know, I think it's people don't know how to talk the comics out either. You run into them, I'm sure these guys over here, and you're like, 
run into someone, you know, if it's like Bill Cosby or somebody, okay, they come up and go, yeah, you're great, I'm a big fan of your work. But if it's like some shit comic like myself who's working for like 12 bucks and beer at the bar, I don't know what the hell to say, so they come up and they go, you're that comic. And what the hell are you supposed to say to you're that comic? Yes. Yes, I am that comic. Thank you for reminding me of what I am. I shall go and spread the joy of laughter to the masses. Thank you, dear woman. I'll be on my way. No, the other, you don't know what to say. They say you're that comic. You're that person in the audience. That person from Athens, Ohio. Woo! All right, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for me tonight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
my question to you, and for, for the audience that largely doesn't know the lady movement, are there a lot of ladies out there? Surprisingly enough, there are a lot of ladies. The yeah. Yes. Would you say there are a bunch of ladies out there? I would go so far as to say there are a bunch of ladies, yes. I have an important question now, especially around here. In your expert opinion, would you say there were a swarm of ladies? <laughs> 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 There's certainly a swarm. Um, when was this uh, lady movement first exposed? When was your lady? My lady was first exposed? Prom night. Prom night? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
say the same for you, ugly. Just get <laughs>
next to a bottle of Tide Color State bleach. He must have drank the whole thing. <laughs> he left this note addressed to us all.
find out two hours later he was asking if, you know, he could sodomize you with a wooden pole. <laughs> oh, that's what you said. <laughs> Speaking of sodomy. <laughs> that was a for you. you know, sex in the 90s, it, it's, it's not always the sexual act itself that's the problem. Sometimes it's the prophylactics involved, you know? I mean, take for instance the condom. Right? I mean, here's a perfect idea of how greed can fuck up anything. I mean, I love the condom, but I hate the way they market it. There's like some guy saying, on, okay, we have the condom, but we need something better. We, we need something more exciting. We need a glow-in-the-dark condom. Yeah, that would work. There's like some guy sitting behind a desk going, Jesus Christ, how can I impress a woman tonight? I know a false fluorescent dick. That would work. Get ready, ladies. I always wanted to know uh, what the reaction would have been from the first woman to ever see a man wear a glow-in-the-dark condom. Right after she turns out the lights and realizes she's being followed by a green, glowing, <laughs> autonomous, floating weenie. It's like, just come right over here. Get some of that. That was my X-Files theme. Bang. <laughs> then they have rib condoms. Which is nice, but just look bad. Look really bad in a guy. It's like, it's like miniature speed bumps or something. <laughs> or fucking gills. Like my penis is going through reverse evolutionary process. <laughs> it's like rib condoms for her pleasure. Yeah, her pleasure? What about my pleasure, okay? What about the pleasure I receive when I look down and it looks like my penis has grown 20 new veins? <laughs> That's some frightening shit, man. Talk about the most disgusting part of the male genitalia. The veins. Like, here's your bonus veins. <laughs> no, thank you. It's like, yeah, I'm looking for a condom that makes my dick look extra bumpy and glow in the dark. Got one of those? Good. Now you gotta watch those polka dots on that thing. Maybe a nice little beanie cap for my head. No, throw a bow tie on. I want a fucking style tonight. It's fucking nuts, man. Condoms the only form of birth control that they actually market as a novelty item. Fucking crazy. No guy wants to wear that shit. When a guy fucks, he wants to feel macho. No guy wants to wear a red glowing condom with a fucking Mickey Mouse emblem on it. Come on. You don't see things like, Mr. Spongy, the talking sponge, <laughs> the didgeridoo diaphragm, wow. Flintstone's chewable birth control. <laughs> Speaking of that, I wonder what it would sound like to hear Fred Flintstone have an orgasm. Here we go. Yabba, yabba, yabba. <laughs> Do. If he was a premature ejaculator, it sounds like this. Yeah, wait, whoops. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, Wilma, I guess you don't have to use those chewables after all. <laughs> I'm wearing new pants. <laughs> wearing, yeah, new pants, which is unusual, man, because I don't like to shop for clothes, you know. So most guys don't like to shop for clothes, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. a couple of you guys. Most guys do not like to shop for clothes with the women. That's a different story. It's like, come shopping with me. We'll have fun. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> See, I have a solution. It's very simple. Public peepholes in the dressing room. There you go. Sexist, yes. But would it work? You better believe it. <laughs> Shit, guys be forcing their women to go shopping with clothes. They're like, get your ass in the car, goddammit. There's a 10% sale on lace skirts. You gonna buy one. You gonna buy one. <laughs> Don't you contradict me, get your ass in the car! I got a hundred dollars in my pocket, you gon' buy a dress! You gon' buy a dress! <laughs> and fuck the football game! We're going to the Gap! We're <laughs> gonna spend all day in the Gap! I'll be right there with you, baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's my act. Thank you very much.
response to it. Headache, Scott. <laughs> no, but seriously, you really should take something for that. I have. Three extra strength Tylenol. My head is still pounding. Hmm. Well, have you tried heroin? <laughs> heroin? How does it work? Oh, it works just fine, my friend. All those rock stars can't be wrong. <laughs> you only drug recommended by one out of four doctors. None of those doctors have currently retained their license to practice medicine, but you can be a little judgmental when experimenting with stuff like this. Here, I'll help you. <laughs> now, let's just let this happy just do its magic. I feel funny. I'm sure we'll start kicking it any second. Let's <laughs> go! So, the doctors even do heroin light for the kids. Actually, it's the same as the regular heroin, but their kids don't ever know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's speaking a language only Keith Richards oh, can understand. <laughs> so the next time you get the air to chase those blues away, why not smack them away with <laughs> Heroin now available at the corner of 3rd and Main. Climb blue fire escape, knock on window three times, ask for Vinny. When asked who's or dope, say dope. When told price for heroin, don't argue with Vinny. He's crazy, we heard he killed the guy. Anyway, take heroin. If you get busted, you don't know Vinny, and you never saw this commercial. You know what happens to rats in prison? Well, do ya? <laughs> The place, a shop in New York City. So there I was, compass in hand, trying to determine the proper path to a legendary dam I had heard about, where I hoped to get my hands on some good beaver. <laughs> <laughs> when suddenly, without warning, the buckles of my rucksack just flew off, sending it, it to the ground. Needless to say, my prospecting equipment was a little worse for wear after that one. <laughs> oh my, that's just awful. Tell me. Have you always been a businessman? No, actually, I used to be a prospector, railroad surveyor, topographer, and trapper. Hmm, all of those. Tell me, how did you get interested in so many different occupations? Well, I always say I went out searching for gold, found fur instead, so I drew maps to lead railroads to the aforementioned fur. No! <laughs> but then I realized I was in the wrong business. I mean, the world has enough railroad map-making topographer trappers. You don't have to tell me. What the world does need is durable outdoor gear. Here, here. So I started this, my own small shop in downtown New York, which is dedicated to the selling of high quality camping gear, featuring rucksacks and tents, which I helped invent. Outstanding. You know, it's rare to find someone who's dedicated to producing high quality, unique outdoor goods. Tell me, what was your name again? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm David T. Abercrombie. Hi, I'm Ezra Fitch. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes. Oh, Mr. Fitch. And what do you do for a living? Well, I used to be a lawyer. I passed the bar. But lately, I've become, well, a bit restless with my life as a lawyer. So I've begun trekking the slopes of the Adirondacks and fishing in the Catskills. So it brought me to your store, actually. Tell me, what uh, right now is your clientele? Well, we mainly cater to wealthy wilderness enthusiasts. Of course, we have our share of professional poachers pioneers and frontiersmen, and of course, the explorers. <laughs> right, now have you ever thought of expanding your business, marketing the outdoors and all its delights to the general public, and not just these professionals? Hmm. Well, that's an interesting notion. Mr. Fitch. Yes, Mr. Abercrombie. I believe this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Shortly thereafter, Ezra Fitch became David Abercrombie's business partner. Abercrombie began to detect trouble when, little by little, Fitch tried to change the focus of their business. We rejoined them ten years later. Mr. Fitch, I believe this is the beginning of many problems. Mr. Abercrombie, when I entered into this business with you, I assumed that my opinion would matter. That simply because your name appears first on the logo doesn't give you the right to be... Yes. Well, I didn't want to say it, but a blithering blatherskite. <laughs> you watch your tongue, Mr. Fitch. 
Now, I believe you made enough of your little changes to our company. Oh, David, what are you talking about? Well, first, I let you expand our market. Now we're selling flannel shirts and khaki pants and other clothes for the masses instead of my high-quality camping gear. You and your damnable camping gear. David, this is the 1900s. People aren't interested in your overpriced Swiss Army canteens. <laughs> They're very nice. Have you ever tried one? Stuff a rag wool sock in it, will you? I'm shooting for the future here. Abercrombie and Fitch at the Millennium. It goes way beyond clothes. We're going to market an entire attitude, an entire way of life. Clothes are just the beginning, David. The sea, the streets will be alive with Abercrombie and Fitch logos. Now, Ezra. Now, this is ridiculous. You know this will never work. The youth of America are far too intelligent to buy into this madness. You sound as if you want to turn our consumers into mindless zombies. Hmm. It's an interesting notion. You know, I really hadn't thought about it, but yes. An entire race of Abra zombies. Dun, 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 dun. You're insane. You do know that. Oh, hello. Welcome to Abercrombie and... Fitch, can I interest you in some durable camping gear? We're running a great sale on trunks. Well, I don't need any luggage. Oh, no, it's not luggage. You see, they're actual elephant trunks. <laughs> Properly cured, they make a great walking stick. Oh, my God. Well, huh. no, actually. I was actually curious, how much is that sweater in the window? Uh, which one? Uh, the one with the horizontal stripe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> the one on the, uh, on the skier. It's, uh, it's ten dollars. Ten dollars? I can go anywhere in town and get a sweater for one dollar. Right, but it's our special ski sweater. Oh, really? Now, who skis in a sweater? Do you like it? Well, yes, but I mean, it's very expensive. Did you say it was a ski sweater? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, what about that shirt? What is that shirt over there called? That would be our classic American shirt, right, David? Oh, it's classic, all right. <laughs> classic America, huh? Mm -hmm. Is that why that shirt's so expensive? That's right. Well, I've never had anything classic before. <laughs> and I do love America. <laughs> I'll take it. All oh, right. And what about the uh, sweater? Well, I've never really skied before, but I'll take that one, too. Outstanding. You know what? I'm going to look around here for a few minutes. Why don't you just take that? Sure. Uh, <laughs> do you guys have anything that's like vintage or authentic? Maybe something with a really big logo across the front. <laughs> yeah. What you're looking for is right over there in our Soho section. Soho? Soho. Soho. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe this. What is the world coming to? I mean, if, if, if he, if, if, if Mr. Abercrombie, if my uncle had a vagina, he would be my aunt. <laughs> I'm talking about the future here. Get on board the glory train, baby. I don't believe this. I just wanted to sell tents some canteens. Is there anything wrong with that? But you managed to make a mockery of that. My simple dream of tent selling. Well, I won't you let you get away with this, David. I won't. I started this company. I won't let you turn it into a brainwashing, money-grubbing joke that you are describing. You're out, do you hear me? Out, Mr. Fitch. Or should I say, Mr. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, all your pride, nobility, and clever wordplay can never save you now. You see, I am a full partner, and I intend to stay that way. That's what you think. That's what me and some of my friends seem to think. Well, well, who are these friends, may I ask? Yes? Yes, what? Yes, you may ask. Oh, who are these friends? <laughs> Photos of you, David T. Abercrombie, founder of Abercrombie and Fitch, in lewd and lascivious positions, doing things with carnubowax and yucca packs. <laughs> you are quite the sexual deviant, Mr. Abercrombie. Where did you get those? Doesn't matter where I got them. The point is, you wouldn't let me do what I want with Abercrombie and Fitch, or I'll go public with Eve. You're a mean one, Mr. Fitch. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of Mr. Abercrombie, the proud tent maker, Mr. Fitch's plan played out to perfection, making him millions of dollars from fraternities alone. <laughs> Mr. Abercrombie died a pauper in a coffin lined with Gore-Tex. This has been the true story of Abercrombie and Fitch. Funny people, most... The rest of the show is going to be real interesting. All right.
Oh. oh my God. No longer a comedian to you. I'm a guy who butt rapes his best friend in front of 200 people. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I used to think I was really, really bitter. And then I met our next comedian. Please welcome to the stage your friend and mine, Mr. David Hetrick. Lovely to be here. I'm excited to be performing at, uh, at one of my favorite restaurants here in Athens, Casa Nueva. Yes, Casa Nueva, probably the only Mexican restaurant I know of around here that doesn't have uh, sequin sombreros hanging on the wall. <laughs> doesn't go for that sort of uh, chichis, tomatillos, faux Mexican culture. You know, I don't know how they came up with the uh, decorating scheme for chichis or tomatillos. It's like, uh, hey, how should we decorate our uh, Mexican restaurant? Oh, I know. How about we exploit a cultural stereotype? <laughs> you know, maybe we could also pass out citizenship tests with the kids' menus. Maybe, maybe that would complete the experience. <laughs> you know, it, it really doesn't matter. Woo! Yeah! But it really doesn't matter where you go in this country. I don't care if it's Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Phoenix, LA. If you're around the malls, you've got the exact same restaurants to choose from. You've got the same Olive Garden, you've got the same Italian oven, you've got the same chilies, you've got the same Ruby Tuesdays. It's all the exact same shit. And uh, these, these restaurants are not relying on good service and good food. Instead, they're relying on gimmicks, and we're buying into it. We're like, good service, good food, screw it. We want bullshit culture. That's what we want. As our life in America is just like riding around in the big uh, Epcot Center golf ball ride. We have no idea why we're riding around in a golf ball, but boy, it sure sounds like fun. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Uh, Applebee's. Applebee's is the neighborly bar. It's the neighborhood grill and bar. It's the bar just down the street. The bar just around the corner. Funny that the bar just around the corner in Lancaster, Ohio, is eerily similar to the bar just around the corner in Toronto, Canada. But nobody seems to point that out. So it's good food, good service, screw it. We just want bullshit culture. Outback Steakhouse. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and point out that steak is not a food that's original to Australia. <laughs> you know, I think you could probably learn more about Australian culture by watching Crocodile Dundee <laughs> than you could by going to, to Outback Steakhouse. But it doesn't have to be a new restaurant to participate in this bullshit culture. An old restaurant like, uh, like Red Lobster with its various sea shanty decorations. <laughs> and, <laughs> we've got an anchor, we've got a swordfish, hey, we're serving seafood. <laughs> This is true, too, about Red Lobster. You can get an entree there, which is entitled The Admiral's Feast. It's called The Admiral's Feast, as if some sea captain would like to go to Red Lobster to feast. Bar. He thinks me like, I might like a big plate of fried crab. But you don't have to travel very far to have these experiences. We have these bullshit restaurants right here in Athens, Ohio. Places like Dolls, Ponderosa. Ponderosa, it's sort of a, you know, like a ranch sort of cowboy motif. You know, hungry cowboys on the ranch. The thing I never understood about Ponderosa, though, it's, uh, it's all you can eat. You know, I know cowboys were hungry, but I don't think they really ate buffet style. <laughs> and then kind of the stupid thing about it, of course, when you finish your meal at Ponderosa, then you get to go over and make yourself like a runny ice cream sundae. You have heard there's nothing cowboys like more than fruity sprinkles on top of ice cream. <laughs> It doesn't even have to be about culture. It doesn't have to be about an ethnicity. It could be about an idea. Like TGI Fridays, that's about an idea. It's the idea that every day is Friday. Every day at TGI Fridays is Friday. What evidence do they provide to explain to us that every day is Friday at TGI Fridays? Well, they've stapled a bunch of band instruments to the wall. <laughs> Where I come from, that pretty much makes it Friday. <laughs> I really love the drinks at, uh, at TGI Fridays, too. We got like the ooh la latte and the spicy ginger flower. A bunch of very expensive drinks. Can I, can I get a $6 drink with no alcohol, thanks? Yeah, thank God it's Friday. This is really great. <laughs> but let me tell you, you know, we have the chance to change it. Every time we go to these restaurants, every time we, we patronize these places, we're voting with our pocketbook. And you can see these restaurants popping up all over the place. Places like... Tourist traps like Fort Lauderdale or the Mall of America or Myrtle Beach. You know, you've got these horrible places popping up. Places like Fashion Cafe, All Star Cafe, Planet Hollywood. Planet Hollywood, yeah, where, the, where the stars go to dine. No. Let's see, I'm a Hollywood celebrity. Let's see, I'd like to go get a $20 hamburger and go to a place where I'll be pointed and stared at like a trained monkey. <laughs> this would be like a really good time. And of course, these places, 
have now begun to start, to start selling t-shirts. Like eating in a restaurant is suddenly an experience that you need to commemorate <laughs> with an article of clothing. It meant that much to you that you bought the t-shirt. You know, see people run around with their, with their Hard Rock Cafe t-shirts or, or their Planet Hollywood t-shirts. To me, this pretty much sends the same message as wearing a Hootie and the Blowfish t-shirt. <laughs> Hi, I'm the most unoriginal person ever. <laughs> That's who I am. But speaking of crappy experiences, uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. Woo! Yeah! Yeah, it's, uh, it's a Saturday, I believe. And it's, it's a really hard time for me, of course, because, you know, I'm out shopping for, for the perfect gift, and it's just very difficult to find the right thing, I think, to buy yourself. And it's been... <laughs> it's been... It's been really difficult. So, so I am single. Uh, single women in the audience, applaud. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! Don't all decide you just want to be my friend at once. <laughs> after you find out I like you. <laughs> oh, no. no, but I am single, Hysterical. and uh, it's easy to get in a rut, I think, this time of year about being single. And I'm single, why am I single, why doesn't anybody like me? And I think it's kind of a really dangerous thing, because, you know, as single as we really all are, funny. and I've been single for a long time, you know, that you're always only about two months away from a little place called Crappy Relationship Land. That's true. And Crappy Relationship Land is a place we've all been, and it's not a real fun place to be. Yeah. The people in here right now can't look at each other because they're in Crappy Relationship Land. <laughs> but you gotta be really careful when you're in Crappy Relationship Land, because people will not be straight with you. People will not tell you how it is. They're going to give you some really horrible advice. Some real shitty advice. I'm not just talking about your run-of-the-mill, everyday bad advice, like, Hey, there's a place called Dalt up the street that you might like to get a bite to eat at. No, I'm talking about really, really bad advice. Totally. Advice like, if you can't be with the one you love, just love the one you're with. If you can't be with the one you love, just love the one you're with. I think that's what they told Tina about Ike. I think that's what they told Nicole about OJ. You know, it's okay if your life sucks when you're single, but if your life sucks when you're married and you have two kids, it's a little more difficult to change the situation. Well, they got a big laugh. Um, well, I'd like to close with a little experiment that I'd like to do. Um, I'd like to have all the attractive people in the audience applaud for me. Woo! <laughs> all right, it sounds about right. Okay, all the interesting people in the audience applaud for me. Woo! Okay, did anybody clap twice? Yeah, I clap twice. Okay, this pretty much conflicts with my research. It's like either you're an attractive person or you're an interesting person. You know, I'm not the most attractive person, and, and thanks, sweet God, because I like to do a little thing that I call developing my personality. <laughs> sort of the opposite of joining a fraternity. <laughs> my point is, if you can skate by on charm, you probably will. That's my time. Thank you very much. So, hey, uh, Nikki. Your boyfriend gets here. Did you want to hang, hang out here and drink, or did you want to go uh, across the street to Tony's? Or, or... I, I don't know. Let's just find out when he gets here. Let's just figure it out then. I, I cannot believe my best friend and my boyfriend have never even met. I, I am so excited. You're, you're just going to love him. I know it. It's, he's so great. Oh, my God. Wait, he's actually he's coming now, I think. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. Oh my god, it's Darth Vader. to stop 
most of this talk. <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot of drinks. Hey, drinks! <laughs> Drinks. Drinks. Um, two Corona lights, please. Yeah. <laughs> Is there something wrong, honey? Oh. <laughs> Let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's right over there. Skywalker, Brainiac. This is Luke Johansson. 
he's a grad student from Pittsburgh. I got a midterm tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> All, right. All right, I've had enough of this. You know, you come in here, you kidnap my customers, you telepathically choke my staff. <laughs> I want you and your friends out of here. Telepathically All right, choke fine. Your staff. I'll go someplace where they appreciate pure concentrated evil. <laughs> I'm going to Puffers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Pat, let's yeah. do a game called Party Quirks. We're going to do a game called Party Quirks. Um, what we before, wait, before we do, can we get a hand for Mr. Patrick Kiley? Thank you. All right. Our first game is called Party Quirks. The way it works is you, the audience, are going to give us, the performers, uh, strange or interesting quirks. We could have strange jobs, we could be strange people. One of you, well, first of all, let's get one of us, send one of us out of the room and we will be, end up being the host. Anyone? Anyone? Mr. Patrick Kiley. And if I, if I had a nickel for every time a woman sent me out of a room. <laughs> all right, now you're going to give strange quirks, occupations, uh, personification, people to us, and when Pat comes back, he will be the host of a party who will be in charge of guessing what our strange quirk, whatever profession is, okay? Ooh, ooh, and... Altar boy, altar boy! Altar boy, we'll start with Nikki. <laughs> Go on down the line, anybody else? Rabbi. Rabbi, that would be Dave. An actor in German shit pornography. <laughs> Corey Landis is an actor in German shit pornography. He will also be playing that for us tonight. Yeah. Now, now, Mike will be Othello. And I will be a male prostitute. That's what my guidance counselor always says. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to have to get Pat back. By d to do this, we need to get him, call him, so on the count of three, everyone please yell, come back, asshole. All right? One, two, three. Come back, asshole! Oh, yeah. Crazy wacky party. My only hope is that some interesting and strange characters will show up. Set <laughs> out some snacks. Work together. 
together before, haven't we? Oh, God! All right, hey, seconds. We, we've got to just get this guy out of his shell. Hi, what's going on? You're not a priest, are you? No, I'm not. Well, I'd like you to introduce some people here. Right here we have a strange, bizarre man from German pornography. Yeah. <laughs> You're cute. Oh. <laughs> Voice of an angel. Ball of an angel. Just like church. <laughs> Pictures that contradict you and 
And uh, <laughs> um, Nancy, uh, you'll be responsible for moving Scott. And I didn't get who was the other. What was the other name? Martha. Martha. Martha Betsy. Martha Betsy will be responsible for moving Pat. Okay, your job uh, will be to, th throughout this improvisation, uh, move Pat and Scott into different positions, which. They will attempt to explain, and we will begin with a situation. We need a situation from the audience that two people would be in. Jump Styles, and we're going to get uh, Mike and Nikki up here. Woo! 
This game is pretty simple. What you're, what you're going to do is you're going to give them a situation that two people could be in, just like the last one. But this time, we're going to start out normal, and this time, you guys are going to yell out a uh, film style or a theater style when I say stop. Okay? Film style, like, you know, drama or, you know, uh, or a specific movie. Titanic. W like. <laughs> I just, I don't know anything. Um, and no, just wait for a second. And, or a specific film, specific m movie, or film, or a, a TV show, whatever. Okay, so first we need a situation. Underwater. Underwater, underwater. What are they doing underwater? Fishing. They're fighting underwater. Okay, maybe something that could possibly happen on this planet <laughs> with people with, for people without gills. Way too easy. Yeah. Been done. Just something that's, I don't know, that they're not going to have to drown to do. Two people in a bathroom stall. Two people in a bathroom stall. Together? Yeah. Sure. No, next to each other. Next to each other. Separate stalls, all right? So, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why I needed to from there. I do those start conversations in the bathroom. I figured as long as there's two sexes in here, I may as well get something going. I came in because of the hole in the song here. Oh. Maybe it's just the angle. Stop! Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Hold on. Feel free to scream out incoherent at any point. No, um. Film style. Boogie Nights. Film Noir. Film style. Film Noir. Drama. Film Noir. Film noir. Go. I was in here taking a shit. <laughs> That's when she walked in. <laughs> <laughs> she had a gun. <laughs> she had the kind of legs that went all the way to the top. <laughs> Stop. TV show. Friends. Go. Fucking bastard, Ross. You slept with somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, Rachel. Uh, no! How could you do that to me? I don't think you need a gun. No. <laughs> hey, Joey, can you help me out? A-I-E. Maybe a gun? <laughs> I am so angry. Stop. Theater style. The boogie. Boogie. Anyone know what that is? Japanese. Japanese kabuki. Go. I made a mistake by entering this wrestling tour. You must do this for always in August to into a, any scene you want. But they will start their dialogue with a uh, letter from the alphabet. Okay? And you will provide the letter, you will provide the scene, and then they will have to talk using the corresponding, the next letter in the alphabet, A, B, C. Well, you're probably familiar with that. Um, okay, so again, we need a scene. For two people, like one person doing one thing, another person doing the other in the same scene. Serving a warrant. Serving a warrant. Okay, serving a warrant. And the letter? J. Jay. I'm not sure about this. Jay. Okay. All right. All right. Serving a warrant, starting with the letter J. Jeremiah, I am here to issue you this warrant. 
more. Kiss my ass. I ain't doing no more shit. <laughs> All right, let me get what you're trying to say. You're upset about me serving you with the war. Man, yes, I am. I didn't do that crime. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that you did. Oh, it's... I hate you, Warren Service. <laughs> Please try to understand. I'm just doing my job. Quiet down. I don't want to hear your stuff right now. <laughs> right, right. I understand. <laughs> So, you get paid a lot of money to issue warrants? Today I got paid. Today was paid. <laughs> Usually I kill you fellers when you come on my land. Very impressive. You're <laughs> very cool. Why don't you take a hack before I get my shot done? Exactly. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> yeller. Yer, yeller. Simply <laughs> <laughs> do, Doc. <laughs> About this one, what does it say I did? <laughs> Butt rape. <laughs> Couldn't, sir. Don't have a penis. <laughs> Don't have a penis. <laughs> Every day sucks, pretty much. <laughs> but I guess so. God, I urinate through my nostrils. <laughs> Second to last game is called Freeze. You're gonna have we're gonna have two performers. Let's say do you want let's pick them. Two performers to start out with. Anyone? Mike. Mike. Mike and Corey. Mike and Corey. Come on up. All right. Basically. Uh, yeah. Give us a, we're, give us a situation for two people to be in. The sides butt rate, please. <laughs> to be it to be Titanic. <laughs> All right. Okay. A situation would be being on the Titanic. Is that good? Okay. All right. Um, all right. So basically, we're going to be just playing the scene, and when we want to, whenever the a actors want to, we will yell, freeze. And then we, we will tap one person. They will have to freeze. Every, both will have to freeze. We'll tap one person, and then we can play... Oh, okay. Well, we're going to start. have them start in a position. Tell them what to do. <laughs> they want you to hug. They want you to hug. We love homoeroticism, don't we? Uh, all right. Now, when we say freeze, we are going to tap one of them out and just take the scene in a different direction. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, freeze. J.P. Morgan, I never thought I would be dancing with you, but since we're going to die when the ship is sinking, I thought, why the hell not? You're a rich man. I'd like to dance with you. I can't think of a finer man I'd like to dance Three. my way to... Ah, oh, shit. Leonardo, please don't leave me. I... I wanna... <laughs> with you and bring in millions and millions of people who can't appreciate good theater. Oh, oh. Well, you, you've got to put... I'm awful cute, though. The ladies love it. Oh. I get so sad when I sink at the end. Wait! Oh, he ruined it. What I want is sort of a pompadour poof. Can you do that? <laughs> I think, wait, we got it. We just got to get it up. Oh, you look like Elvis. This but it can't be too mild. It can't be too mild. Right, right, right. Yes, Mr. Lane. <laughs> Fine, yes. Freeze. You know what I like to do is name my life. <laughs> sometimes I call him George. Sometimes I call him Frida if it's a woman. But if you say you don't name my life, hey, you got a nice one right here. I like him. Well, don't squish it. <laughs> I don't squish it up tonight. You just hush your butt. Barbecue sauce, they're great on oh. dogs. I like them. I like them with shrimp scampi. And it's cultural. Wait a minute. <laughs> Look, you're obviously an intern, ladies. Make sure you show your appreciation to him.
How's everybody doing so far? Oh, good. <laughs> well, I'm here at OU uh, going for my MU. Uh, Masters of the Universe. <laughs> it's a lofty goal, I realize, but a little help from Professor Orko, I think I'll be fine. <laughs> so, is everybody tonight um, getting jiggy with it? Yes. <laughs> See, that was a trick question. You weren't supposed to answer that because it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> getting jiggy with it. It doesn't mean anything. Does anyone else want Will Smith to go away for a very, very long time? Yes. Yes, he should. I think he's lost his mind. Coming up with garbled gibberish and making millions of dollars off it. I mean, what is getting jiggy, actually? Is it, is it dangerous? Could I hurt myself? Do I need jiggy insurance? I mean, what is it? Is it gonna mind me getting jiggy with it? I mean, do I necessarily even need it to get jiggy? What do I do when I'm done getting jiggy? Should I tell somebody or should I be embarrassed? <laughs> getting jiggy. I mean, for heaven's sake, all right. The music industry is telling us, come up with a nonsense phrase, make lots of money. All right, let's start this tonight, okay? I'm gonna, I want my millions of dollars, let's see. Um, feel the squirt wobble. No, 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 no. Feel the squirt wobble. Where's my money? Because that's pretty much it. See, I wouldn't have to worry about this if I was Amish. Because the Amish don't like radios because they're evil. You know, so they wouldn't have to hear that. Anybody here fans of the Amish? Yeah? Yeah? Well, you should be. Well, I don't think they'd appreciate that language, but nevertheless. Well, you shouldn't be happy for the Amish, because they pretty much suck. <laughs> Don't know if you know this. You know, everybody says, oh, they're so cute, they're so nice, they wear the nice little outfits, and they churn butter, and they... No, they're not. They're a bunch, they're, they're, they're a hypocritical, cheese-eaten, stanky, uh, weeping bunch of bastards, is what they are. I mean, the Amish, they make up rules, and... They're not hard on themselves. What they do, actually, is try to make loopholes for themselves to make their lives easier. For example, they're not allowed to own or operate cars, but they're allowed to ride in them. Too evil to drive, too evil to own. They can ride in them. Oh, they don't mind riding, especially the vans, the big evil van sheets. Oh, no, they don't mind riding them. Plenty of room for all them and their stinky Amish friends. Go on in. I mean, I don't think the line of evil should be drawn between actually owning a car. That's evil. And riding in one, that's fine. Like God's going to go if, uh, you know, an Amish van careens off a cliff. Well, I'll take the Yoders and the Millers, but the driver, he will have to go straight to hell because driving is evil. <laughs> no, it's not. Another thing. Amish can't have phones in their houses because phones are evil, right? Phones are evil. But they can have them at the end of the driveway. <laughs> but I want to know. So what goes on from the house to the end of the driveway that suddenly transforms in there and suddenly immune to the evils of the telephone. I mean, is there some sort of uh, space-time continuum where they go to get protection from the evils of the phone? I think they should use this with the television, you know, the sort of Amish distance rule. I think they should, uh, they want to watch like an episode of Dawson's Creek, you know, like the Amish might, you know, just uh, walk into town five miles to a fretter and, and watch it there to negate the evil. <laughs> the evil of the television. <laughs> Another thing. All, thanks. Another, the farm equipment of Amish people are supposed to be all animal drawn and not, you know, gas powered or mechanical in any way. But that's not, that's not what they have. They actually have mechanical, you know, farm equipment. What they do is they put a donkey in the front, attach it to it, to make it look like it's doing the work. Like this is fooling anybody. Well, hey. Ezekiel got a new donkey. Well, shit, that's a him like a son of a bitch. And listen to the noise he's making. He's even putting off smoke. Why the donkey? That's no, not happening. Strange rules the Amish live by. I don't know if I could live by it. You can have facial hair. Just gotta look like Abe Lincoln's. It's quite a rule. Uh, Another example of the strange Amish rules. You know, I bet you didn't know this, but they are allowed to use uh, soap and bathe. But it says in the Amish handbook that you must end up twice as smelly when you're done. That explains things. The Amish really aren't that nice, because the thing is, they have this thing called shunning. I don't know if you know about it, but uh, if you so much as make your barn out of the wrong kind of wood, or, you know, you use the wrong lace toilet, they'll shun your ass. 
they're medieval about that. Someone tells me that the women Amish are behind this sort of, you know, click thing. I can just see, you know, a bunch of women standing around. Oh, don't talk to them. Don't even, they use zippers. <laughs> Stay away. So we're getting about ready for spring break. Let's move on from the Amish material. Uh, where is anybody going? Georgia. South Dakota. Why, all right, why the hell are you going to South Dakota? My mom and dad live there. What part of South Dakota? The Black Hills. The Black Hills. Yeah. Wow. Uh, home of the Black Hills gold. Oh, right? <laughs> huh? And the Native Americans. And the Native Americans. They're from the Black Hills. It's the Holy Land. It's the Holy Land, North Dakota, South Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've taken some good vacations. I've um, gone to Yellowstone. Anybody been to Yellowstone? Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy Yellowstone as much as South Dakota? Old Faithful's a trip. Old Faithful, see, it's interesting you bring that up. I don't understand this geyser thing. I was standing there thinking, okay, I've heard about this Old Faithful. I'm standing there. What's that? It's a girl thing. It's a girl thing? I don't even want to explore the Freudian implications of that. But I was standing there looking at a bunch of people standing around, looking at their watches, staring at a hole in the ground, waiting for warm water to shoot out. It's like, this is quality entertainment. I'm glad I paid the $7 car fee to get in here. I mean, it seems to me like God's little private joke, like he put a gigantic bidet on a timer to see what kind of reaction it would get. Yeah, yeah Yellowstone, quite a nice place. That is... Until it burned completely to the ground a couple of years ago, if you didn't know about that. Apparently, Smokey the Bear, uh, not feeling very motivated that day. Remember Smokey the Bear, right? This guy had quite an attitude. Remember? Only you can prevent forest fires. Only you. How about you, Smokey? You're the damn fire bear. Get off your furry ass and do something. I mean, really, you're wearing the uniform. You might as well fight the fire. Yeah, I, Smokey the Bear has always been an object of suspicion for me. I'll share this with you, see what you think. I think he's gay. I think Smokey the Bear is a homosexual bear. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, of course, it's fine to be a gay bear. Lord knows I've been a gay bear once and I wasn't persecuted. No, uh, when you think about it, you know, where all the other bears are out, you know, creating havoc, raging, raping and pillaging, and at least stealing picnic baskets. While Smokey is prancing about in his neatly pressed quasi-military uniform, like the lost village person, and he's going around picking up trash and checking outlets to make sure the forest is fire safe. And I've seen the way he looks at Woodsy the Owl. When I was at Yellowstone, I found this very disturbing thing carved into one of the, uh, the park benches. And I'll share it with you because I want you to be equally disturbed. It said, and this is very true, this is true, this happened, it said, Somebody carved this in. Huey Lewis has a 12 inch dick. <laughs> it said this. I mean, and I assume they meant Huey Lewis of Huey Lewis and the News, otherwise, this isn't very noteworthy. You know? It brought so many questions, questions to my mind like, who was this person? Why did they get to see Huey Lewis's 12 inch dick? Why did they feel it necessary to share that with an entire national park? Did answer one question, though, however. How in the hell Huey Lewis ever got a record contract? Because it sure wasn't for his music. <laughs> 12 inch dick thing sort of explains it. So, uh, one of the most disturbing vacations I've ever uh, taken, when I was a very young child, my parents took me to uh, uh, a Donner Pass. Anybody been to Donner Pass? No, of course not. This is why. If you're not familiar with uh, Donner Pass, it's where the Donner Party, this family, they're trying to go to California. They pretty much gave up and started eating each other. So, this is where my parents take me as a young child on vacation. Hey, thanks! Scarred for life! I mean, most parents are taking their young children to Disney World, the happiest place on Earth. My parents take me to Cannibal Park. Great, thanks a lot. And I was sitting there eating lunch, and my dad was eagerly reading out of the bro brochure. And son, this is the very spot where they dismembered the huskier of the dead women and gnawed on their nourishing flesh for survival. <laughs> Pass me some chicken! <laughs> I mean, this made me paranoid about my own vacations. I was worried that all my trips were going to end up like this. And of course, my dad seized on this and made it worse. We'd be like going on a day trip to the mall or something. Oh dear. Looks like we're running out of gas. <laughs> well, we're going to be here for a little while, and suddenly I'm getting verified gangsterly. Getting funky on that mic. 
like an old batch of collard greens. It's the capital S. Oh, yes, I'm fresh. Double O P. D O double G Y D O double G U C. Showing much flex when it's time to wreck a mic. Pimping holes and clacking a grip like my name was Dolomite. Yeah, and it don't quit. I think we in the mood for some motherfucking G shit. Yo, Dre. <laughs> gotta give them what they want. I'm saying, Gee, you got to break them off something. Well, hell yeah, and it's got to be bumping. The city of Compton is where we take place for a match of attention. I roll like a motherfucker, but I ain't finish it. I'm dropping the funky shit, makes a second niggas mumble. And when I'm on the mic, it's like a cookie, they all crumble. You try to get close and your hat don't get smacked. My motherfucking homie dog, your dog has got me back. And never let me sip, cause if I sip, then I'll slip back. But when I got my Nina, you know I'm straight tripping. Yeah, and it don't stop. I'm just like a clock when I tick and I talk. I'm never off with with until the break of dawn. See you when Petito went and the city they call me. <laughs> <laughs> Putting that shit together. Lick my nigga DLC. No one can do it better. It's like this and like that and like this. And I'll take it, Aaron. It's like that and like this and like that. And uh... Ladies and gentlemen, Corey Landis. So I'm at Ohio University. I'm going uh, getting one step closer to my uh, my MU the Masters of the Universe. <laughs> I know it's a lofty goal, but I think uh, a little help from the magic of Professor Warkov. So uh, is everybody tonight getting jiggy with it? <laughs> See, that was a trick question. You weren't supposed to answer that because it doesn't mean anything. Getting jiggy with it. Does anyone want Will Smith to go away a long time? Because I really do. I think he's finally completely lost his mind. I think he should be committed, possibly. Getting jiggy with it, it doesn't mean anything. What is getting jiggy with it? Is it dangerous? Could I hurt myself? Do I need jiggy insurance? What is it? Does it mind me getting jiggy with it? Do I even need it to get jiggy? Once I get jiggy, what do I do? Should I tell someone? Or should I be embarrassed? <laughs> getting jiggy with it. So this is the message that the music industry is telling us. Come up with a nonsense phrase. Make lots of money. <laughs> well, hell, I can do this. Uh, let's see. Um, healing squirt poodle. <laughs> no, 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 no. Feeling squirt poodle. There you go. I'm ready to put out a record. <laughs> I won't have to. I won't even have to listen to that. By the time. Sounds like these, I wish I was honest, because you know, the radio is the tool of the devil. <laughs> Anybody got uh, fancy Amish here tonight? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, shoot me, because the Amish pretty much suck. <laughs> they do, people, you know, they see the Amish, they say, oh, they're so cute, they were the best in the office, they had crafts. No! <laughs> the Amish were basically a bunch of hypocritical, hard drinking, butter churning, pilgrim looking bastards. <laughs> That's what they are. No, seriously, they have these rules, you know, people think that they have these hard rules put upon themselves. They live so simply. No, their, com their complete way of life is based on convenience. They have little loopholes for themselves. They live fine. For instance, they have a little rule. It's, uh, it's evil to drive or own a car. Because cars are evil. They don't mind getting rides in them when they do that. Especially people lying on driving. That's evil. Riding, well, that's perfectly fine. Like if a band of Amish people careens off the cliff, God's gonna go, well, I'll take the uh, Yoders and the Millers, but that driver will have to go to hell. What was he thinking driving his evil? Another rule. They are uh, not allowed to have telephones in their house. Because it's evil. They didn't have the end of the driveway, though. <laughs> transformation takes place. <laughs> but suddenly they're immune to the evils of the telephone. This is some sort of space-time continuum that exists, you know? Do they rub sort of an anti-telephone evil ball on themselves? <laughs> Another thing. It's supposed to have animal drawn farm. You know, no mechanical stuff, no gas-powered stuff. But they do, though. They do. They get around it, though. What they do is, and this is very true, they'll put like a donkey on the front, attach it, to make 
it's almost like it's doing the work. <laughs> like, this is fooling anybody. <laughs> and there's some guy going, Oi, see, you've got a new donkey. <laughs> oh, man, nothing's put on like a son of a bitch. <laughs> Listen to the noise it's making. It's even putting off smoke. That's one hell of a donkey. And I've just got some crazy rules. For instance, you know, uh, hey, you can have facial hair. It's got to look like eight blankets. Great, great rule for the Amish. Another thing, you might not know this, but the Amish are allowed to use soap and bathe, but uh, they just must uh, end up twice as smelly as when they started. <laughs> That explains why they smell. <laughs> the Amish aren't that nice people because they have this sinister thing called shunning. Yeah, they have this thing called shunning. It's medieval the way they do this, you know. Use so much as, you know, yeah. use the wrong kind of straw in your dorky Amish hat. They'll shun your ass. <laughs> Very nasty. Something makes me think that the women Amish are behind this. You know? Something tells me I think the women Amish really get off on this. Thank you, zippers. Oh, what's that? Okay. <laughs> zippers are cool. Uh, so it's getting, it's getting about time for spring break. Yeah, anybody going anywhere? Yeah. yeah. Well, where are we going? Do you want to go? Chicago. Uh, I've, uh, I've taken some good vacations in my time. Yellowstone National Park. Anybody been to Yellowstone? Yeah. Yes? Quite a place, quite a place. You know, you got the paint pots. Whatever the hell those are, these big tubs of stinky goo, I don't know. <laughs> nice forest, and, and the guys are just no old people. It's like a, a national treasure. You know, I'm a little kid, and I'm standing there looking at a bunch of people, looking at their watches, staring at a hole in the ground, waiting for warm water to shoot out. <laughs> well, that's quality entertainment. <laughs> what a great vacation. Thanks, Dad. Somebody makes me think that this is one of God's little private jokes, you know? He puts like a little uh, bidet on a timer down on Earth. <laughs> See what kind of reaction it's going to get. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> that was a hole. That's what it is. <laughs> Yellowstone, beautiful place. That is, until it burned completely to the ground a couple years ago. I don't know if you've heard about this yet. Yeah. Apparently, Smokey the Bear wasn't feeling very motivated that day. <laughs> yeah. Y'all remember Smokey the Bear, right? This guy had a hell of an attitude. <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> Only you. Yeah, but how about you, Smokey? <laughs> You're the damn fire bear. Get up your furry ass and play with fire. You already got the outfit. Go ahead and do the rest. <laughs> he was always an object of suspicion for me. Here's some evidence. Uh, well, I think he's gay. I've always thought so. I was always such a way. Not that there's anything wrong. Lord knows I'm going to be gay bears and they did very nice. <laughs> Here's some evidence for you. His name is Smokey. Okay, now let's think of another famous Smokey. Smokey Robinson, not exactly the bastion of heterosexuality. <laughs> or, I mean, well, other bears are going around raping and pillaging, creating havoc, or at least stealing picnic baskets. You know what normal bears do. Well, Smokey's prancing about in his neatly dressed quasi-military uniform, like the lost village person. And he's going around picking up trash and checking electrical outlets to make sure the forest is fire safe. I've seen the way he and Woods of the Hour with each other. <laughs> when I was in Yellowstone, this is the strangest thing, this is absolutely true. Carved in one of the benches there was this inscription. It disturbed me, so I would like to share it. You would disturb me as well. It said, Huey Lewis has a 12 inch dick. <laughs> it just brought so many questions to my heart. I mean, I of Huey Lewis and Blues. Otherwise, you know, why would it matter, you know? But who was this person that saw Huey Lewis as a member? Why did they get to see it? And why did they feel it necessary to carve it into a park bench and share with an entire national park? If anything, it does answer one question, though, is how Huey Lewis ever got a record contract? Because it wasn't because of his music. So all that penis sort of explains it. It's very good. Apparently the power of love was a lot more powerful than I had thought. <laughs>
Well, we're especially delighted that they're in the audience rather than on stage. Trust me. Right, right. So if we could do have one more sound check, everybody, the whole group, and the next comedian is going to be flashing in here. Just let's go. One, two, three, go. freaky kind of thing. I was sick as hell, and I couldn't breathe, and tonight I'm going to do the same act because I'm going to do it. Glad to see everyone uh, made it out today in spite of the weather. That's good. I myself have been getting kind of sick of the weather. I don't know about you guys. Not, uh, not the bad weather. I just mean I'm getting sick of all the damn weather. <laughs> this is the only place on earth that goes through all four seasons every day. A couple days ago, I woke up for class like 8 in the morning, put on a heavy shirt, coat, gloves, hat. Went to class, got back at like noon, got out of class, sun shining, birds are singing, the stoners are out whipping the frisbee around. <laughs> Today started winter, now it's spring, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not us that I feel bad for, though. It's, it's all the weathermen around here. Have you seen them? I mean, they, they've all got, like, substance abuse problems now. They don't care. They come out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, now here's this guy we got this week with the weather, and he comes out and goes, oh, Christ. <laughs> uh, tomorrow we're going to have a low of nothing, a high of, like, a thousand. Uh, we're going to have some rain, some sun, some snow. Christ, we might have a damn tornado after lunch, man. I don't know. You know not, that, not that the real weather's any better. I mean, we, they come out and they do all that stuff that, like, only other weathermen can understand. You know, it's like the guy on Channel 5 is doing the weather for the guy on Channel 2. Why don't they just tell you what to wear? That's all you want to know anyway, right? Like, instead of, like, a map of the United States, they just come out and they go, you know, they have, like, a little naked guy here. Like, maybe, maybe like the guy from the Operation game. They come out and they go, yeah, you know, today is looking like a t-shirt and jeans and maybe a nice spring jacket. No hat, but there's a 50% chance of an umbrella a little bit later on in the evening. You know, but no, they come out there and they got all their, their technical stuff. You know, they come out and it's, uh, yeah, we got a uh, high front system bagging a cold front moving across the Atlantic, bringing in some balmy temperatures. And balmy temperatures. That doesn't make a damn bit of sense to us. They, they can let me do the weather. It'd be, ju it'd be just as effective for the TV audience. Come on, yeah, we got some blue spiky lines here <laughs> moving that way, and there's a fat H over Ohio. <laughs> and uh, see these red bumpy lines here? Well, when these run into the blue spiky lines, all oh, hell's breaking loose. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, see, that's why, that's why we come inside. You see, outside we got all the weather. We come in here, out there, weather, in here we have alcohol. 
All right. Speaking of, yeah, I've been doing, uh, I'm not a comedian full-time because I make no money doing this. I, uh, I've been doing some uh, studying lately on uh, the effects of alcohol. Now, a lot of people know, okay, you know how alcohol affects the brain. You've all seen the PSAs. What you don't know is that alcohol affects different parts of the brain in a specific order. You see, the first to get affected by the alcohol is the volume section of the brain. <laughs> Guy who comes in, he, 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 he's, when he's not drinking, he's just like, hey, how you doing? You know, I was getting, you know, give me a beer. Okay, a couple beers later, though, he hits the volume section. One volume, Fred Flintstone level. He comes in, and the louder he gets, the closer to you he wants to talk. <laughs> he wants to come up and he wants to do this. Hey, 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 you gotta give me a beer, I'm gonna be our beer. You bet, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Nelson. <laughs> and, then, it, it, and also, everything's public. Everything's public when the volume section goes down. It's a, at the beginning of the evening, you gotta go to the bathroom, the guy gets up and he goes to the bathroom. When the volume section's affected, he stands up. Man, do I gotta piss. Woohoo! Woo! Gotta go! Gotta go! Gotta go! Nature calling! Go! Hope I don't hurt myself. I've got a big one. Well, you've seen it. <laughs> but that's just the first section. See, next it gets to the ambition section of the brain. Now, the alcohol hits the ambition section. This is fine for some people. You know, maybe you get a little silly. You say stuff like, as soon as I sober up, I'm starting a band. I gotta learn to play something, but I'll, I'll work it out. You know, something like that. But for some of us guys, it's a real problem because we start. We start looking at like Steeler defenseman types going like, I didn't take that guy. <laughs> he didn't know, so, yeah, so, okay, he's big. He's big, I'm quick. <laughs> See? Quick like a bunny. <laughs> or a cat. As, as a matter of fact, that guy thinks he's so tough, he needs to ass whip him. <laughs> and I think the cat's gonna give it to him. <laughs> Get up there, guy. Hey, buzzer. <laughs> I'm going to be okay. I'll be on the dance floor. Because that's the next section. Oh, the dance section. You all been there. Everything starts sounding like some kicking dance music, doesn't it? Especially like some 80s pop, man, you know. And I'll tell you, when the dance section's affected, you're not just, you know, a sober guy comes, he's going to dance, you know, he's going to, you know, okay, he's going to dance a little bit. Oh, no, no, not once the dance section has been affected by alcohol. Get the feeling of that rhythm. is pretty damn bad, but it's not the worst. We know the worst section. The part of your brain interested in the opposite sex begins to fill with alcohol right here. And as it fills, it starts to swell. And it completely overpowers the adjoining section of the brain. The section of the brain concerned with looks. <laughs> Oh, everything's looking attractive. <laughs> so, maybe I can hook up with her. That's the mic stand, Mike. She's got kind of an olive oil thing going on. <laughs> Probably not seeing anybody. Cool, now, if, your fr if your friends don't drag you out of the bar at this point, though, fortunately there is one last section. I'm tired from the grooving. <laughs> the alcohol will hit the ego defense section of the brain. This is when the ego defense section takes over. All body functions. Sorry, uh, uh, he's had a little too much to drink. Uh, we're in a situation here. Uh, first off, uh, stomach, give him a weird craving. Uh, fajitas and coffee, fajitas and coffee, go. Uh, now, stomach, we're no side beers. Uh, that ought to scare off that Sasquatch he was dragging home. Uh, now, uh, feet, report, this is an emergency feet. Turn off the metronome. <laughs> Uh, this is the brain. We can't seem to get up. <laughs> Just leave him here. We'll have a good story tomorrow. <laughs> Speaking of uh, alcohol, getting 
kind of late here. This is college, for God's sake. I stopped off on the way up here. I mean, it's like 1020. This is the serious university here. I hope you guys don't mind if I drink on stage. They say it's like uh, you have an alcohol problem if you drink at work, but you know, most people don't work in a bar, right? <laughs> I mean, you guys don't mind if I drink on stage, do you? Uh, okay. I was hoping you guys were going to say that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you guys are easily entertained. I got a little story, actually, about drinking. You guys like drinking stories? So uh, not long ago, I went to visit a buddy of mine up at Ohio State. And uh, we went out to a bar. And I was under 21 at the time, so you know, it was illegal. And uh, we went into this bar, and I'll be, I'll be darned if I uh, didn't get busted. So I'm like up there, you know, the, the guy says, oh, that's going to be a son of a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> a guy, uh, I go before the judge, and he says, well, you're a first time offender, so. I give you a choice. You can either pay the fine or you can go to an AA meeting. So I said, all right. <laughs> I said, I'm not wasting beer money on a fine, damn it. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the meeting. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I'm dying, yeah. <laughs> and it's about to get up there. <clears throat> so I say, I'll go to the meeting. And I go to the meeting and I say, do you know why we're here? And I said, no. And he said, well, we're here to help you with your drinking. And I said, cool, could you hold this for a second? <laughs> I have to redeem myself after that beer bong. This is this is OU, damn it. We don't choke after after beer bongs. Oh Christ! All right, this is getting ugly. You know what? Take that for a second. We're on. When you do, I act like it's long enough. You start to build up a tolerance. <laughs> and it doesn't bother you to do the I'm a guy. See, I'm like most comics. I'm not a stand-up comedian. <laughs> and I think that'd probably be a pretty good reason to get the hell off the stage. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. I had a good time. <laughs> And you got to be careful who you go out with, too. Uh, I mean, what is dating nowadays? You take a girl into a bar, you buy her a few drinks, she goes home with somebody else. <laughs> there was a girl I went out with once, uh, she just liked to go to expensive restaurants. Where do you want to go? I don't care as long as it's expensive. So I took her to the airport for a sandwich. <laughs> airport. <laughs> Nazis, Nazis, Nazis. And I'm not talking about people who hate other people and kill them just because they think they're better than they are. I'm talking about grading people, giving them C's. Because we don't want no C's. Please don't give us any C's. No C's, no C's, Nazis. Thank you very much. so much. Hello. How are you? Very well, nice to say, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mel Hallett here, Katie Comedy. It's, it's also here for all the great comedians you've seen thus far tonight. 
Man, I had so I got, I swear to God, I'm going to return that paper in some time. I swear to God, it's going to, got 11 in class right now. I, I'm already tired of it. It's called, don't hold your fucking breath. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. Uh, so how's everybody doing? Great. The guy from Philly says something, ladies and gentlemen. Let him sound. All right. I love it. I'd like to tell, I'd like to tell a knock-knock joke to you. <laughs> Sorry. I killed the cameraman. I'm not going to make it in this business. All right. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Marv Albert. Marv Albert. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Thanks. That's good. Because <laughs> he assaults people. <laughs> That's funny. That's the only thing about my comedy, folks. You never know when it's going to be a joke or a very violent assault. Oh, Lord. Okay, I've got another knock-knock joke, but I'm going to preface it by saying I'm not the kind of comedian who sits up here all night and does knock-knock jokes. Um, knock-knock. Yeah. Amnesia. Amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, weird crowd. Um, oh, boy. No, I'll tell you what. I shouldn't make fun of my revival. Well, I guess I should. But generally, I'll try to make it a rule in comedy not to. I'll tell you why. This isn't going to be funny, so just indulge me for a second. I'll tell a, a, a little story about a little kid. He was, you know, everybody had, had one of these guys in their class, right? Fat, he had Shane, obviously. And, uh, okay. Um, you know, fat kid, glasses. He's the guy in gym class who got hit in the face with a dodgeball, and his glasses fell off, and he cried. Everybody had one of those. Or maybe not. Okay. Um, no, but he would get teased, beat up, like every day, all the way through high school. And eventually, he ended up coming to Ohio University. Ah. <laughs> I hate when the audience has Tourette's. It's really, you know. Um, thank you, though. I'll keep that in mind. Um, this guy, he came to Ohio University. And freshman year and probably sophomore year, he lost all the weight, about 50 pounds. And uh, eventually, you know, he got contact lenses, and uh, you know, and he ended up being kind of a cool guy. And uh, I just remember because we used to beat the hell out of that kid. I swear to God, it wasn't, it wasn't me. <laughs> God, no, no, no. I, uh, I'll tell you what. I was kind of a strange kid, though. I was an extremely strange kid. Um, I, like, I remember one time right before a test, I, uh, look, if I need any more shit out of you, I'll squeeze your head, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, one of the vocabulary. <laughs> it's a proper now. Great. Um, no, as I was saying, before, I was really, no, no, I was just a very strange kid. I remember one time before a test, I, uh, I, I guess I was really nervous, and I took a, a green, uh, what is it called, marker, Corolla marker, and I, st and I stood up on my chair, and I just, for no apparent reason at all, I stood up on my chair and started just coloring on my face and singing, John Jacob Jacob, his name is John Jacob Jacob, John Jacob Jacob, no, 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 and so the teacher ended up grabbing me, and I was kicking and screaming, I bit her, and so, you know, I, I wasn't even allowed to take the test, which, which sucked, because I had to wait to, for like two weeks to take the SAT. You know, <laughs> this, this is more embarrassing than anything else. Um, anyway, I'm not that, um, not that young anymore. I'm a, I'm a fifth year. going to graduate someday. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't get excited. That's what my parents are. I'm like, no, it's not going to happen for a while. Um, Taking 12 hours and smoking lots of dope doesn't get you graduated, I guess. Uh, so, but I'll tell you what, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, but I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to, you know, conform to this bullshit corporate America suckhole that is screwing up all, my, all the rest of my friends after they do graduate. Thank you. Part of the people. No, so I mean, it's absolutely, all right, let's get a shot of fucking Marxist Revolution right now. <laughs> Let's go! Yes, yes! Congratulations, okay. 
Everybody on the count of three, shut up, assholes. One, two, three, shut up, assholes. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Well, uh, yes, uh, three word vocabulary now. Thank you. Um, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Martin Luther Richard. No. I'll tell you what, that's what part of the reason I wanted to come to Athens in the first place. You know, it's, it's a nice town. We've got cool little businesses like this. We've got, a, you know, a worker, workers owned uh, place like Casa, a great place. Apparently, they don't know when to stop serving. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so, no, but I'll tell you what, everything was fine, perfect, until this quarter. During this quarter, the what should I call it? Horrible, dark plague of corporate America showed its ugly head in, uh, in Athens. I basically think that what happened was corporate America looked at Court Street. They said, hmm, look at the uh, beautiful, beautiful brick buildings, the nice brick streets. This is so tasteful. I think we should put a big, shiny box right in the middle of it. You know, let's pick a big metal and neon side. No, two neon side. No one on Court Street will sleep, ever. You know, so, I mean, it's absolutely, <laughs> four words now, is it fact? No, it's absolutely. And so, what was my point? What was my point? Yeah, absolutely. Let's play the quiet game. Okay? And anyway. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very clever. Um, the guy from 30 something is going to kick your fucking ass. All right? I love that. Oh, Lord. So, but I'll tell you what. The worst part about belts, I'm not making this up. It's supposed to be a retro 40s, 50s diner. It actually says, right, I mean, it actually says on the menu, on the outside, I haven't gone in because, you know, I want to keep my soul. Um, <laughs> it says to experience the good old days of the 40s and 50s. You know what? I think some of my black friends would agree with me that the 40s and 50s ain't the good old days. I mean, if you're gonna, excuse me, sorry. Um, if you're, <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna call that the good old days, I mean, you know how they name things? So you're like, what, like for the, for the next like big event, they're gonna like not let black people in. The good old days, great. That's, that's what happens when there's too, many, too much money in the hands of stupid white people, all right? I swear to God, apparently, the Aryan Nations in the audience. Sorry about them. Sorry to white people. <laughs> anyway, I mean, what are they going to call Like, they call things cute little names like the back of the best burger, segregation milkshake. You can have chocolate or vanilla, but no vanilla swirl. Or we could have, hey, it's 40s and 50s, a Korean war fortune cookie for afterwards. Your fortune is, you'll be drafted to die in a meaningless war. All right, it's a good old days. Wonderful. Well, hey, thank you guys very much. You've been very nice. Good night. Thank you very much, and that's the Seco Killer! <laughs> Nip Seco in the bud. Will our next comedian, Corey Landis, please step to the stage? Thanks. Nice everybody stuck around after that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Everybody doing all right? You recovered? All right. Everybody recovered from Halloween? Yeah. I'm disappointed I'm not seeing as many breasts out. Uh, you know, remember that picture from the Athens News with the uh, person exposing their breasts? Remember that picture? That, that was me. Uh, no, it wasn't me, but I, I was in that uh, in the crowd, though. Don't get me wrong, I'm not some sort of, you know, sick pervert or anything. It was, it was purely by mistake that I happened to wander into that large, streaming crowd. It was purely by accident. I thought they were yelling, show us your pits, show us your pits. And I was just sticking around long enough to see whether it was like fruit pits or, or snake pits or other pits. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah, I saw the breasts. Uh, not really that big of a deal, not that impressive. They were very, uh, very white. <laughs> very floppy. 
like uh, bread dough that hadn't been kneaded properly. <laughs> don't get me wrong, though. I, I don't fault her at all. I give her a lot of credit for what she did. I think it was a very important statement. I think that more women should make that public uh, statement of uh, indecency. And you know what? I think it should start right here, right now. <laughs> Where is your political mindedness? I'm very disappointed. Yeah, but I mean, uh, thank you. Hey, hey, shade. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you pull one over your face? Um, but uh, I mean, I was shocked by this. A little, a little yelling, a little money throwing, and suddenly somebody into exposing themselves. I was shocked by this. I was appalled. I, I had no idea it was that easy to get to see breasts. <laughs> Pay money, get to see breasts. This thing, I'm just spitballing here, but that could catch on. I don't know. Think about it. I'm very pathetic, if you couldn't tell already. Um, see if you're as pathetic as I am. I find myself, just as an average nice person, wishing everybody else was a little more evil so that I would stand out more. You know, I wish, uh, I like to get credit for things that people are just normally supposed to do. You know, for example, like, uh, if, I, if I hold the door for somebody, you know, which I always do, and they, this time they happen to be a uh, horribly ugly uh, cripple with bad breath in one eye. You know, I'm holding the door, I'm feeling like I just gave money to charity or something here, you know? I mean, I expect the person to say, thank you. Thank you for being nice to a horribly ugly man with <laughs> bad breath in one eye. God bless you. It doesn't happen, though. You're supposed to do that. Like, I'm talking to somebody who, uh, who I know is gay, and, you know, I'm not listening to what they're saying. I'm just thinking in my head, Am I a nice guy or what? I'm talking to this guy like he's not even gay. I'm coming to heaven. You know, I look in the mail for the letter. Dear Corey, thank you for not committing a hate crime during our conversation. Love the gay man. Doesn't happen. I find myself wanting credit for things like uh, when I give money in church, when I give money in church, I, I try to make eye contact with the usher. Most of the congregation, if I can, and the preacher, if possible. I make a big deal about it, you know? <laughs> Nobody ever seems to be impressed by that. Have you seen the commercials for the home hair removal system? Have we seen this? The electrolysis thing, it's called Total Perfection. I think this is outstanding. First of all, it's talk, called total perfection. So basically, we're telling women that all you need to do to achieve total perfection is not have facial hair. <laughs> not really. It's a good start, though. You can work on your big ass later. <laughs> they, they say that it removes the hair without any painful plucking or waxing. Instead, it uses a gentle current of negative ions pulsing through your skin. Oh! Well, of course! This doesn't sound healthy at all. No current of negative ions pulsing through my skin is gentle. I mean, ladies, you don't have to go to this extreme. I mean, you got these robotic jumper cables zapping your hair. Don't bother! Use a lighter instead. Seriously, it's, it's not worth it going to all this trouble. I mean, if other women in other parts of the world can grow facial hair like our fat Italian women, they would be so happy they would decorate it and braid it. Celebrate your facial hair. Yes, ladies. Except for you attractive ones. I'd kind of like you uh, clean shaven, if it's all right. <laughs> they say uh, in the commercial that it can be used almost anywhere, except in the kitchen while you're making meals. Funny, I don't remember that spice in the salad. Honey? Ooh. <laughs> can be used almost anywhere. And of course, we know the anywhere that it can't be used, right? The sort of area below the equator, right? But really, I mean, who would be so silly to use electrolysis to try to correct your really bushy uh, bikini region just because the boys in swim team make fun of you when you go home crying to mommy and... What are you looking at? <laughs> so I didn't read the instructions. Who are the one with the bruises?
I'm sorry. So as Scott talked about uh, the diner from Mars, have you been to Dalts yet? Oh, uh, no, wait. Ben Levels, ladies and gentlemen. Part of the Rhino. If you do go to Dalts, you know, there's a rule. If you go more than once, you will burn in eternal hell. Or have to have your stomach pump, whichever comes first. What I love about Dalts is it, it's so very authentic, isn't it? Just like Scott said, it, I forgot. I, I, would, I didn't live in the 50s. I didn't know what they were like. But it's nice to go in and sort of enter a time warp of sorts, really. I, I go in, I had no idea that the buildings in the 50s uh, were all lined with red neon and were made of reflective space-age materials. <laughs> it's just like the 50s. Yes, it's very wonderful to look at. You know, they... A little bit of trivia for you. The original Daltz was uh, built in 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico. Of course, the government claimed it was a weather balloon. <laughs> yeah. Daltz is very authentic, but the thing is, they try too hard to be, you know, retro and authentic. Like it says in the menu, we make our milkshakes thick and fluffy, and we serve it in the mixing tin. Well, you know, in the 50s, they didn't have that in the menu. It was just expected. Another example. It was just expected, but in the Daltz menu, it says, our mashed potatoes come with pubic hair from the chef. It was just assumed in the 50s this would happen. <laughs> it's not quite as quaint when they announce it. All diners in the 50s, of course, like Daltz, uh, trying to recreate it, they, they all have their own line of clothing, right? Just like Daltz. <laughs> T-shirts and sweatshirts, of course. Oh, come on. I mean, Happy Days was more realistic than this. I mean, you didn't see the Cunninghams running around with Al's fleece wear, did you? Hey, Fonzie, you get that shitty T-shirt at Al's? Correct the mundo. <laughs> no. How about the gold records on the walls? Like we're supposed to think these are real. 50s diners did not have gold records on the walls. I look up, well, hey, honey, look at the gold records from Elvis on the wall. You know, I would have thought they would have been in a museum or Graceland or at least the Hard Rock Cafe next to David Lee Roth's hot pants, but no, they're here. <laughs> Come on, like, like Elvis said in his will, please, Priscilla, distribute these to some shitty diner in Ohio. <laughs> You know what else is retro about Daltz? God bless you, ma'am. What else is retro about Daltz is the prices, huh? Remember the good old days? Remember the 50s when you can walk into a diner and pay $6 for a meatloaf sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have meatloaf sandwiches in the 50s? How do you think they invented meatloaf by then? You know, my trip to Daltz moved me so much that I... I had to say goodbye and express my thanks in the only way I knew possible, the 50s way, the retro way. So when I left, I, I sang a bebop song and I killed them all with an authentic switchblade. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. If, if the cops arrest a mime, do they tell him he has the right to remain silent? That's what I want to know. Thank you. Our next comedian, Mr. Dave Hetrick. <laughs> Hetrick or Hetrick? Hetrick. Hetrick! I got it right the first time. Thank you. When in doubt, steal Stephen Wright's material. <laughs> sure. Well, finals week is here. Finals week is here, one week away. Where did the quarter go? Where did the quarter go? I don't know. Finals week's coming up. I used to get real into finals week. Yeah, I used to get real into the spirit of things. Study all night, drinking Mountain Dew, ordering pizza with your friends. It was great. But now I've I've kind of lost energy in the whole thing. I don't get fired up about finals week anymore. But it doesn't matter because there's still plenty of people that get all they can out of finals week. And you know the people I'm talking about. These are the same people that have been pulling the same acts since they were in first grade. They're trying to combine two things that never go together. Fun and learning. Learning and fun. Two things that never go together but yet they have to continue to try. So you'll ask these people. And what are you going to do tonight? Going to study? 
Um, yeah, we're gonna study for like a little while, and then like Rachel and I are gonna go to Ping and take a study break. Take a study break. Everybody wants to take a study break. People who've never been to Ping in their entire life are heading there, because it's a study break. And then you got uh, people that want to study in a fun place. I'm gonna study, but I want to study in a fun place. I want to study in the front room. I want to study at Perks. Let's study at Perks. Everybody's studying at Perks. Everybody's going to be there. It's going to be a great time. We're going to sit there on the couch and drink expensive coffee, and it's going to be fun. No, it's not, because you're studying. When you study at Perks, all you're doing is prolonging the agony of studying for about five minutes. Let's think about what you're going to do. You're going to walk in. You're going to stand in line. You're going to look at the stupid fake friends chalkboard menu. <laughs> Decide what you want to order, step up to the counter, order what you want to order, sit down with what you want to order. Three, two, one, now your life sucks again. <laughs> read, 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 stop, turn page, sip my coffee, ah, oh, in this lovely no, because I'm still studying. <laughs> but you got to take a break. Got to take a break. Because every test-taking manual ever read, Says you gotta give your brain a rest. Gotta take a study break. Give your brain a little time to heal. See, I don't buy it. So I've been giving my brain a rest all quarter. <laughs> I think it's all charged up for finals week. It's all charged up. But you know it's bullshit. You know a study break is bullshit. Nobody smart ever took a study break. No genius ever took a study break. Karl Marx never took a study break. <coughs> Uh, the Wright brothers never took a, start, a study break. Thomas Edison never took a study break. Thomas Jefferson, he was writing the, uh, the Declaration of Independence. He didn't say to himself, I'm going to write myself a paragraph, and then I'm going to go play horseshoes. <laughs> it didn't happen. Only one person, one person in history ever took a study break. He wanted to take a little time off from his job as president to go see a little play. <laughs> it was the last study break he ever took. American history. Does anybody have any history finals coming up? I don't have any, but I have taken some American history. I love American history. It's fun. You learn some things, though, that you don't really believe. Some things you just can't quite understand. Like one thing that I've always learned since high school, the, uh, the triangular trade. That's a triangle, for those who weren't paying attention. <laughs> Triangular trade, molasses to rum to slaves. One guy gets molasses, one guy gets rum, one guy gets slaves. Don't believe in this, why? Because two people got a real shitty deal. <laughs> one was the slaves, but the other's the guy that got stuck with the molasses. Everybody's out drinking their rum, and he's home making cookies. Because <laughs> that's about all you can do with molasses. <laughs> but for real though, I mean, uh, that, things aren't, aren't like that anymore. You know, we can have the triangular trade. It's, it's literally just uh, a drive away. Let's say we want uh, rum. We can go to Mighty Mart. Say we want molasses. We can go to Kroger's. Say you want something made by slave labor. You can go to Foot Locker and get a pair of Nikes. <laughs> so it's all right at your fingertips. So that, what that means is that we have a lot more free time. A lot more free time. And as I, as I said earlier, the quarter flies by. The quarter does fly by, the years fly by. But there's a lot of things that still don't fly by. Your two hour class that you have every Tuesday and Thursday, it doesn't fly by. Your 10 page paper on irony doesn't fly by. And most of all, your afternoons where you have absolutely nothing to do, don't fly by. Let me give you an example. Say like a Friday afternoon. Because most of us don't either have, don't have that much class on Friday, or we have absolutely no class on Friday. And that's going to be the most productive day of the week. <laughs> Boy, you make yourself a list. You're going to run some errands. You're going to cash some checks. You're going to go to the store. You're going to write that paper so you don't have to write it Sunday night. No, you're not. <laughs> Friday afternoon, you'll have two things to look forward to. One is lunch, and the other is dinner. <laughs> so once you've done those, you pretty much shot your walk. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Friday afternoon is the kind of afternoon where you tune in to Mari Povich, realize you've seen it before, but you watch it anyway. That's my time. Thank you very much.
Hey, all right, we're going to do a couple of improv games. Um, the last uh, four committee, well, you guys come on up. Um, Mike Brzee, Corey Lannis, Phil Patrick, and myself are all part of uh, the Comedy Sloth. And we do sketches, improv, stand-up, as you already know. We're going to do a couple of improv games you've probably see, seen before. I'm going to put my beer down. Um, the first thing we're going to do is um, a game called Party Quirks. What we're going to do, we're going to ask one person nicely to leave uh, the room briefly, and we're going to be assigned, the rest of us are going to be assigned by you, the audience, three quirks, characteristics, anything like that, okay? Like, his bowels are full of jelly. I mean, anything, or a strange place or whatever. So first, we want you, the audience, to tell one of us to leave and to go out of the room, and they will be the host. <laughs> Mike Brzee is going to be the host. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, um, now you guys are going to give you, the audience, are going to give us, the performers, um, quirks or characteristics that Mike, when he comes back, is going to have to guess, okay, as the host of the party. And we will be guests at the party, hence party quirks. Anyone? There was a peeping Tom. Peeping Tom? Who wants, who wants, who's going to be the peeping Tom? Tell us. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Somebody knows me. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, one for me. I think he said, I have body bad, odor? Bad. What is my characteristic? Bad body odor. Bad body odor. All right. And one for Dave. Sex offender. Dave is a sex offender. Again. But what is his character? Huh. All right. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna get uh, Mike to come back, and by by getting Mike to come back, we are going to call him. Okay, we're gonna say on the count of three, come back, asshole. Okay, one, two, three, come back, asshole. <laughs> All right, let's come from. Sense. You don't like the blinds. Yeah, it's my uh, fashion sense. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Whew! Well, I, 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 Got I senses. Thinking, I, I was thinking of getting curtains, actually, as opposed to the... Please uh, don't get curtains. No really, curtains? Don't. You're a very attractive man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Gay Interior Decorator. <laughs> no, not exactly. I know I know what the inside of his house looks like from a certain angle. Oh, all right. Well, oh, hey, make yourself at home. Let me just okay, I'll let you. I'll watch you walk away. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Fine, thank you. And yourself? I'm just fine. I just came from Garlic Town. Oh, and your breath smells wonderful, Mr. Bad Breath ah. Party. I appreciate it. He got me. Generally applause. Hey, there's somebody at the door. Hi, I'm here to inspect the milk. You're here to inspect the milk? Uh, uh, Is your daughter around? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, she's not here, but ask Peeping Tom if he's seen her. Maybe Peeping Tom has seen her? <laughs> so uh, we want to inspect the milk. I... Well, at any rate, I, I brought Yeah, it. I like it, work it! <laughs> I used to work out in my car with uh, candy, but I'm beyond that. All right, so you, you used to work out in the car then, so you were, you know, just pull up to people. Hey, once I'd like you to meet my friend, the peeping Tom, who doesn't hear too well when he's already calling out earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. Th thanks for stopping I by, buddy. <laughs> so you were you were working out in the car then, getting uh, pumping some iron, or you were? Uh... Oh, not at all. I'm here to inspect the milk, and I'd like to talk to your daughter. <laughs> She's not around. Would you like to talk to my wife at all? Uh huh. We've started. <laughs> you're, you're the milkman, and you're a pedophile. Sure. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're gonna take it. All right. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're short on time. We're gonna just play one game, one more game. It's called World's Worst. You guys are going to give us three professions. 
And the three of us will stand in the line, and when we think of the world's worst example of this, we will give it to you. Okay? So we need three professions. Shepherd. Dancer and a scuba instructor. Okay. Right. A dancer, shepherd, and scuba dive instructor. Um, we'll do scuba dive instructor first. Yeah. Okay. Scuba diving instructor first. Yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's just a myth that you need oxygen underwater. <laughs> Welcome to Disney World. No doubt your ride on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea will prepare you for your scuba diving exhibition. <laughs> Expedition. <laughs> Who says we need legs? <laughs> I'll put a one flipper on. I haven't made love underwater yet, but you're a pretty man. Shepherd. 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 You gotta move the sheep during the rain or else they'll shrink. <laughs> Hey, Boopeep, want to take a look at my staff? <laughs> they say this sticks for shepherding, but that ain't all it's good for. <laughs> well, that was just sick and wrong. <laughs> you gotta, let's, let's move the sheep to the back. <laughs> okay, now the audience is a bunch of Puritans, great. Bad. I didn't say that. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Bad. Shoot, that ain't a star! School Christ! <laughs> dancer? Okay, uh, dancer. I only have one problem. I'm a very good uh, dancer, but unfortunately I have narcolepsy. <laughs> that would be bad. Of course we can do the waltz. We're just attached at the arm is all. <laughs> if I could have got it all the way to the damn shoulder, it's going to be funny. World's worst dancer. Uh, I am a bad dancer. <laughs> the old white guy in the corner at the Nick. <laughs> Woo! Comedy Sloth, look for our television show on Active 7. Mayim Bialik is the world's worst dancer at the beginning of Blossom. Yeah. I think they're trying to pull the wool over our eyes there a little bit. Oh, Underwater, you know, and everything. Don. Okay, great. Bars. You know, if you ever do this, don't write your comedy routine five minutes before you come up. Do it, like, ten minutes in advance. So, uh, you know, any of you working? Kids, uh, I'm not. I'm unemployed, but this summer, this past summer, I worked for UPS. Um, it was horrible. Um, it was hot as hell in there, but um, so I finally quit. You know, figures they went on strike the week after I quit. But, you know, I would have stayed if they had only let me drive one of those cars, you know, their neat little package trucks. You know, I think it's really something, you know, driving a truck around with no doors. I mean, that's great. You're like, um, well, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, this, there's this guy uh, last year that lived in my dorm. He joined a frat. I mean, he was horrible. I bet those guys are sorry now. But... <laughs> I think frag guys, they're like the only people in the world that they have a life's uniform, you know. You got the, you know, white shirt, you know, sport coat, khaki pants, and they never forget the dirty base baseball cap. I mean, what's up with that? Since when did baseball caps and sandals go with formal attire? <laughs> Hey, you got it. Last time I had 
people had, I had to tell people it was supposed to be Seinfeld. I'm getting better. <laughs> so, um, um, you guys, uh, you like confetti? Um, I had bananas for breakfast. Let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah, now I remember. All right. <laughs> I mean, now, I don't have a TV, but I go to Bigger Center a lot to, uh, to watch a big screen TV. You know, it's great. People are, like, bigger than I am. But, I mean, there's always those same people sitting in there. I don't get it. So, you know. <sighs> um... <laughs> laughing at me because I'm pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is I supposed to show you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah, now I remember. All right. Now, Joel Rudy, um, you know, many of you think he's the root of all evil, but really, it is a television Baker Center. Um, I think Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids proves my theory. I mean, Bill Cosby's a genius and everything. Don't, you know, don't think I don't love him and everything. I mean, he's great, but, um, but, I'll put this down. But, I mean, that show makes absolutely no sense at all. I mean, what was up with the guy with the hat? I mean, he wore this wool cap on his head all year round, yet through some miracle of physics his eyes still showed through. <laughs> and what was his problem? Let's buh 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 some buh snow buh cones buh. <laughs> I think he had a little too much heat to go into his brain. And, uh, and commercials, boy. Um, you guys seen that uh, new Burger King commercial? <laughs> the song? I mean, if, you, if you're a musical artist, just don't let, you know, burger commercials, you know, don't let companies use your song for the commercial, because it'll completely ruin it. I mean, now, whenever I hear that song on TV or on the radio, you know, I, I picture this big fat guy coming out of nowhere eating this burger. You're like, la, 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 you know, enjoying the song, and then all of a sudden this girl, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, so you, you got to hate that. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, does anyone re remember the, sh uh, the cartoon Shark Tales? Anyone? Ever? Oh, wasn't that great? There were these bears and pandas or whatever going around, you know. It, you know, whatever they were thinking, it would suddenly appear on their shirt. Now, I wish I had a shirt like that. It would be like, it would always read like a couple things like, you know, Oh, there goes another girl I'll never see naked, or... <laughs> or, whoa, what would happen if I took this bowling ball and threw it at that hippie's head? <laughs> but those shows don't exist. I tried Star Trek, so... Um... Boy, I'm really losing it here. Oh, okay. Um... <sighs> and, uh... Have any of you, uh, who lives in apartments here? Because I'm getting new to apartment living. Um, and finally, I have to, I actually have to clean the place. You know, I'm a pretty clean guy. You know, I'm skinny, I clean, I'm neat, I guess. Um, not gay, but neat. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to make sense of these commercials on TV for, you know, cleansers. I mean, which one is the best? Does it make a difference be whether it's green or yellow or, you know, what scent it is? And why are they always trying to make the thing smell like something edible? It's like, mmm, fresh ammonia. <laughs> All right, well, I better go and clean my apartment because I got rats on the floor. I'll see ya. Step aerobics. Uh Apparently, to do this, you have to have a master's in dance and a little bit of coordination. <laughs> I have neither. So I, I walked in, and I'm, I, I actually was cocky. Like, I have no right to be this way, because I don't know how to dance. I, I don't know what I'm doing. But yet I walk in thinking, step. That's got to be easy, you know? Come on, you step up, you step down. I walk up steps every day of my life. No. So I walk it, I, I'm up there, I'm like, I'm stepping. Hey, let's go, ooh, we're doing the right leg. Ooh, hey, yeah, it's hard, oh, yeah. And I'm kind of talking to people like, yeah. right leg, look at her, thinking she's an instructor. Ooh, we're doing left now, oh, God, oh. Oh, Th then, then we started to alternate, but it caught on eventually, and then, you know, just kind of, 
Oh, woohoo, yeah. And then out of nowhere, she does like a back handspring double flip over the, she's like bouncing on the, everyone's doing it though, everyone's following her. It's like this big, like bouncing balls thing. And I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm stepping with the right, you know, so I kind of gave up on that, you know, cause I don't know though, I think I'm gonna become one of those bitter old women who just kind of, Hey, Bill, what are you trying to do? Hey, Bill, what are you trying to do? Schedule me after Nikki? Man, this is the most impossible act in the entire world, right? When that lady's good. Look, could you come up here and do this for me, please? I'll give you all the lines, okay? Look, we're going to have fun tonight. Aren't there wonderful comedians? Okay, well, not that many. No, they, they, was, they were all right. Hey, what is your name, sir? Uh, my, name, my name's Matthew. Uh -huh. Do you like sex? Yeah, very much. Tell us more. Very, very much. Okay, well, that's pretty exciting. So, uh, you know, I was trying to do the, uh, the typical fall down joke. Oh, no, I'm scared after that one. Was that like Mother Teresa at a porn movie or what? I'm sorry, that just scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I have to follow that? Jeez. No. <laughs> okay, how you guys doing tonight? Uh, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. I, I, the crowd was going up until that point. The momentum was there. And, I'm kind of feeling under the weather, but I think, you know, it would be honest to say, aside from the three guys up in the uh, Mir Space Station, we're all pretty much under the weather. I mean, come on, in reality. I had a weird childhood, guys, I really did, you know. I mean, you hear the stories about people who were, you know, stolen by the gypsies. I was left by the gypsies. They, that's what my mother kept telling you were left by the gypsies, they left you here. I, you know, I, I was ignored by my imaginary playmate. But at least he quit beating me up. Uh, hey, that was a plus. I was always beat up a lot when I was a kid. I was a skinny little kid. I mean, my hair had more body than I did. It did, it was, it was, it was horrible. It, it, things have changed, my hair thinned. Yeah, it's a, it's a scary thing. But, uh, oh man, I, it's, hard, it's hard to follow an act like that, Bill. It really is. Can, can they get a hand for Bill back there, all right? That's a, a difficult thing to follow. I need my notes up here now because I'm totally lost. I had it down, I was there, I had it to a T, and then I totally lost it. <laughs> I'm tangled up here. Doesn't make sense, he had a woman, he had an apple. You've had your 10 minutes, sir, and that's all you're ever going to get, okay? Remember, you know what, what Andy Warhouse said about the 15 minutes of fame? He made a mistake in your part, okay? Thank you. But I got a funny one now. No, that's all right. Take it. If you had your time, we can thank you. You need help talking to your kids about drugs. Call for this free book.